You ever see a little kid do something shitty and they don't know how to lie yet? So you'll be like, hey, did you rub chocolate milk all over your face? Is that why you look like that? And they're like, no, um, um, there was a chocolate. What happened was that's how Ben Shapiro pretends not to be pro mass shooter in his fucking movie. Right. But then he periodically just goes, I love chocolate milk on my face. And then he comes right back to the lie. And you're like, whoa, what? Exactly. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting in a jumperoo bouncy thing that he definitely retrofitted for an adult is my good friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? <laughs> I'm fantastic, Keith. Uh, I hate this movie. I hate everyone who made it. And I would like to start yelling about it. That's fair. <laughs> Just bounce around a little bit. Relax. You're okay, buddy. I really want one of those. I need ukulele accompaniment. I really want that jump brew thing. It's a good <laughs> idea. And sitting in Southern California with her dog that she did not abandon like Ted Cruz did is veteran <laughs> guest masochist, Cara Santa Maria. Cara, welcome back. Uh, thanks. Oh my gosh. I'm loving the Ted Cruz news. <laughs> He's so <laughs> stupid. It's so bad. It's so, um, especially because all my family is like freezing their nuts off in Texas right now and literally oh, having right. to build fires and, you know, just banana stuff because they don't have power. What a dick. Trying to be contrite about it now. It's so, he's so bad at everything. I know. All right, let's just get right into the movie. Kara, what are we going to be breaking down today? Ooh, so this movie is called Run, Hide, Fight. And <laughs> the movie plays out in that order. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. <laughs> and Clever. it's bad. It's really bad. Oh, God. And uh, Eli, maybe you could elaborate. How bad was this movie? <laughs> well, if you loved Die Hard, but you're mad that nobody adapted into a workplace safety video, <laughs> you will love this movie. Where they break all the rules, by the way. All of them. Yep. Yep. All right. And is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, best, worst, controversial backstory, because you may not have known this, but they actually killed a deer on camera for this film, which caused what? a massive uproar. And seriously, yes. And Gross. they removed the name of one of the executive producers because he got arrested for sexual assault. Shocking. <laughs> Never could have predicted Everyone that. Everyone who made this movie, the IMDb goofs page for this are like, he killed his entire family and then himself in a quadruple homicide that's left the house haunted since 1972. Also, the bullet's at the wrong position in the wall. <laughs> All right, we, we kind of need something that's not goof. For this, maybe it's a separate section that's not goof. That's just horrible, heinous thing about the people. Oh, I can we know. Get a tab for that. Uh, uh, if I can go a little deeper on that story, because we're going to talk about it in the first shot, but then we have to talk about the plot of this horrible fucking thing. So <laughs> the opening shot of this movie, spoiler alert, is the daughter and the father hunting. And because this movie was made by idiots, they just went out and shot a deer with a skeleton crew. And they were like, look at that realism. We did great. And then... Of course, the second makeup advisor found out about this and was like, hey, man, did you murder an animal for your shitty little manifesto movie? And the director, being an idiot, was like, yep, totally did. And she was like, cool, I'm going to tell the union you're in trouble now. <laughs> Good. Great. As a dog's life taught us, you're not allowed to just murder animals for your movie. <laughs> no, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Like I, I, I dug really deep into this and although there are technically no laws against it and it does seem like they, well, they claim at least that the deer was hunted on private property and Texas has pretty, you know, extreme laws about hunting. Like you can capital punish a deer in Texas hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. 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 It's totally different than a lot of like, I don't even think you need a license if it's on your property and it's, you know, seen as like a cull. Like if it's, you know, a species that 
kind of needs management anyway. Oh, right. The purge. That's part of Texas. Law. Yeah. <laughs> and to be clear for anybody listening to this, I'm actually not that I'm like super pro hunting, but I'm not anti hunting. I think that there's a space for hunting. And I think that actually there are a lot of situations in which we need to ethically hunt in order to manage populations of certain animals. That said, it is a blatant violation as you said, of union rules. No animal should be harmed in the making of any film. And if you notice, they couldn't put that disclaimer anywhere on the movie. <laughs> no, they could they not. They should have apparently. had to put the opposite disclaimer on. Yeah. Okay, like, one animal was harmed in the making of this movie. We're sorry. <laughs> and there's a whole deep dive on the internet by the Daily Beast, and it's amazing. Like, there's actually an animal handler that worked on the film because there were rats in one point, and the mm -hmm. rats were, like, cared for because there was, like, you know, a legitimate animal handler who brought them and who worked with them. And she didn't know, like, they kept it from a bunch of people that they went in the middle of the night and shot this deer or at dusk or whatever. Oh, and, so yeah, people, people freaked out when they found out. Now I just really want, in the background, we see the animal handler finding out in the background of a shot. She just <laughs> side tackles the director. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, now I want to make a movie about a deer hunting Ben Shapiro. Like <laughs> a reverse deer hunter scenario. Yeah. But okay, so for best worst, I was going to go with best worst crisis actors. <laughs> oh, um, shit. <laughs> and I mean that like literally... The movie is made by a team of crisis actors. This is what crisis actors are. That's what that is. That's what we're watching. <laughs> yeah, ben Shapiro like, employs a team of crisis actors to make this movie. It's like, you know, when Trump calls certain things fake news, but then he makes fake news. It's like that. It's like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fake exactly. news, the movie. <laughs> yeah. And on a related note, I was going to go with best worst person to make a movie about mass shootings. Mm. You know, if the Quebec mass shooter had visited my Twitter 93 times in the month leading up to his attack. You know what I wouldn't make a movie about? <laughs> Anything, Ben Shapiro, because I would have beaten myself to death with a sock full of bars of soap out of human decency. But I definitely wouldn't have made one about school shootings. So here's the thing. <sighs> ben Shapiro knows unequivocally that more than one mass shooter has been his fan. Jeez. And he made a fucking how-to guide as a movie. We have rarely watched something more abhorrent than this film. And we've now watched two You Really Ought to Marry Your Rapist films. Oh, God. <laughs> we actually have. Wow. <laughs> Didn't want to remember that. <sighs> I legit feel bad for a lot of the people who worked on this movie because, again, in the we're still doing backstory here. This company, Bonfire Media, mm -hmm. is actually just a repath of an old uh, company called Cinna something. Have you guys seen this? Okay, Cinna. I just State. knew it was Daily Wire that did this. That's <laughs> all I know about it. No, here's here's the crazy backstory. So Cinna State is a Dallas-based movie studio, and they specialize in populist films. For example, they made a you know MAGA film starring Mel Gibson called Dragged Across Concrete, which is a what? police brutality apology of. How have we not done that movie? Uh, What's I'm it called? Sorry, I'm writing it down right now. Drag you know, Eli? Across Concrete. Drag Across Concrete is the title of a film with Melvin Gibson. Melvin Gibson. And it's all it's and it's like an anti-police brutality, not anti like like they're actually anti. It's like a Blue it's, Lives Matter. It's a Blue Lives Matter. Pro yeah. police brutality film. And so We're here's good. the thing. Wow. This company was disgusting on its own. And again, there's this long backstory, but whatever. One of the EPs who worked for the company is like indicted for sexual assault, which mind you. Shocking. Yeah, mind again, you. Again, sh shocking. He was working on Run, Hide, Fight, even though people knew that he had this history. And this movie had hundreds of underage background actors in it. Ugh. Yeah. So so then there's like this, you know, outcry. A ton of these people quit the film. They repackaged Sinistate and then turned like they shuttered and they turned it into a movie called Bonfire Media or something like that. And then they sold the movie to the Daily Wire. Wow. So yeah, that's locked in. We're definitely watching Drag Across Concrete and we're definitely watching the five hour Zack Snyder cut of Drag Across, Across <laughs> Concrete once that comes out. Oh, Looking forward to it. And with all that established, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back to tell you all about Run, hide, fight. <sighs> <sighs> 
Are you guys sure we had to do this at 6 a.m.? Well, surprise. Uh, surprise what? Guys, I woke up at five for this. It's breakfast. Yeah. Have some marshmallow cocoa sugar bombs. Or if you like cinnamon sugar candy crunch, we have that too. Guys, I appreciate the offer of cereal, but that stuff looks like really bad for you. Oh, it is. Yeah, mine comes with an insulin shot. Yes, yeah, in the box. Wow. Guys, why don't you just try Magic Spoon? Oh, is that a magic spoon that never runs out of cereal? Because, yeah, Noah told us that's not real. Yeah. Is it no, real? No, shh. Listen to me. It's a cereal. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. No way. Huh. Way. It's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in every serving. It's only 140 calories, and it will fit with, like, any diet. Cool. Plus, the variety pack comes in four flavors. Cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. I love those flavors. Oh, peanut butter's the best. Yeah, and you can even mix and match them. Like, you know, peanut butter plus cocoa makes a peanut butter cup. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's such a good idea. So where do we get this magic spoon stuff? Do we have to, like, kill a wizard? Because I will kill a wizard. It's true. He's done it before, Kara. Done it. No, I don't want to know about this. No wizard murder required. Just go to magicspoon.com slash gam to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code GAM at checkout to save $5 off your order. Sounds good, Kara. But what if I hate it? Well, Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for literally any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Incredible. Yeah, remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash gam and use the code gam to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. We're in. Did you really kill a wizard? Okay, technically, it was a, a children's birthday party magician. Yeah, but, but he still had to go. So, it was a wizard. I'm going back to bed. And that's when she told me that kissing could actually give you the cooties. Uh, yeah, Ben, I think your wife might be lying. She's a doctor. Okay, everyone, settle down, settle down. Welcome to the first ever writer's meeting for Run, Hide, Fight. Yeah, Hooray! Right. Woo! Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we here at The Daily Wire are very excited to make a movie about the people that we directly inspire all the time, all whilst proving the right-wing media outlets are not just made up of racists who were scorned by the Entertainment business because they contain no soul. That's not true. Here, here. I like to wear hats. Yeah, exactly, you do. We're real people with depth and not soulless husks that should be cut up and used to feed the starving. That's not what we are. Exactly. I'm a lady and I came up with these thoughts all on my own. <laughs> you sure did. You sure did. Now, obviously, school shootings are a sensitive topic. So we need to make sure our movie is accurate as possible. <laughs> oh my God, I totally got you guys. Look at your faces. No, <laughs> just kidding. We'll write down whatever bullshit we want. Oh, phew. <gasps> I got so scared. I tweeted a swastika. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, if we could Google, we wouldn't work here, right? Obviously. Totally. What's a Google? Right, exactly. So let's take a 15 minute break to search our names on Twitter and harass people who don't mention us. And then we'll bang out this homicidally dangerous movie, huh? You ready? Okay, but everyone, make sure no one touches any boobies. My wife, who's a doctor, told me that if you touch a lady's boobies, your hands fall off. Okay. I'm Ben Shapiro. You are. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start with a cold open, literally looking down the barrel of a gun. <laughs> of course. Yep, good start. And as we teased earlier, this is when the makers of this movie actually killed a deer for their <laughs> yeah. movie. Yes. Apparently yes. that's true. Wow. That's why it looks so real. Yeah, right. <laughs> it does, apparently. Yeah. So we're watching a dad taking his kid deer hunting, which I guess that's that's meant to be like, oh, it's perfect prep for an active shooter who would freeze from a flashlight in case that happens at your school. <laughs> I was rooting for a terrorist deer and I was going to be on board with the movie. Oh, absolutely. And hey, nothing makes you appreciate the cinematographic skill of David A.R. White, like the Daily Wire's first attempt at making a movie. This thing is shot in the dark. <laughs> you can't see shit. 
I love, Eli, that when you typed that word, I tried to read it out loud like seven times. And I was like, is this a real word? Cinematographic? Cinematographic. Cinematographic. That's right. Cinematographic. (laughs) I'm our generation's Shakespeare. (laughs) And then, so she shoots it, but she shoots it wrong, which is always a funny thing when hunters say that. They're like, it didn't die right away. I missed or whatever the fuck it is. So they go over and dad does this amazing idiot monologue where he goes, now his lungs will fill with blood. And he says, real quote, the animal will die a natural death. And I wrote in my notes, no, dude, you shot it. (laughs) That's fairly unnatural. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, hey, maybe you give the speech about the torture that's happening after you finish off killing the deer. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was like this was like a full on Titanic moment where she's like, I'll never let you go. Yeah. And then like prize his hands <laughs> from her and like drops them in the water. But then right in the middle of that speech, the daughter picks up a giant rock and smashes the deer in the face. It was I so jarring and yes, so hard and yes, funny. It was brutal. Yeah. And for so long, because it's interrupting his like, you know, the ancient Navajo people as they looked <sighs> over, wham, <laughs> smash. And he's like, oh, oh, I yeah. really wanted like a spray of blood to get in his mouth. Oh, my mouth was open. <laughs> Hun, no more hunting for you. Okay. We're going to therapy. <laughs> so now they get home and they appear to be being chased by a spooky snare drum on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, duh, 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 duh. but she's just like eating cereal. Yeah. And we meet cancer mom right the fuck away. So bingo for anybody who, who has cancer mom on their sheet in the right spot. Mm-hmm. Three minutes mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. And I was very confused during this scene. And I'm so glad that you guys explained it to me because I heard little glimpses from Thomas Jane about the fact that her mom was dead. So I'm like, so who is this lady in the kitchen with cancer? (laughs) I literally thought that their plot in this movie was that her mom died of cancer or her mom dies. And then he remarried a woman who quickly got cancer. And so now she has two sick moms. <laughs> like, I thought that's where they were going. And I was like, that's why I wrote, isn't that a bit over? <laughs> yeah. Dad, I think your dick might be radioactive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be clear, cancer mom is ghost of already dead cancer mom. But it would have been fun and over the top if she was literally like a live cancer mom and ghost cancer mom, both interacting <laughs> with each other in the scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have to say, Cancer mom, cancer ghost mom here almost won my award for most useless ghost in any of the movies <laughs> we've watched. She will do anything from like, you probably shouldn't get shot to, so what do you think of this skirt throughout the film? But she will be absolutely no health at all. Yep. She'll keep changing outfits. Her entire purpose, I think, is to narrate slowly the title of the movie and space it out throughout <laughs> Run, Hide, and Fight in acts one, two, and three. I think that's her entire purpose. Also, by the way, I must point out that in literally every scene, she's holding a cup of tea. Yeah. And yep. it must be cold. It's so mm. There's no way it's still warm. Yeah. She's supposed to be in heaven and she's got like tepid tea. It's a, a lot of things that don't make sense about it. Yeah. And like, if this is like the Christian heaven I so often hear about, why is she still without her hair? Why does she still look ill? Yeah. Like, it's it's not the heaven that's been described. Oh, we're going to get to that later in the movie, Carol. Oh, okay. But pin in that, because the answer <laughs> is upsetting and stupid. <laughs> okay, okay. Is there an I'm answer excited. to why she has symptoms of cancer in heaven? Yes. Eli is so good at looking at the weird undercurrent. And you always catch the stuff I miss. I'm a shit movie whisperer. That's my key. <laughs> <laughs> that's my skill set. So yeah, Thomas Jane and her, they grumble at each other for a little while. I I should point out that the lead actress, first of all, her character's name is Zoe. I found that out about three quarters of the way through the fucking movie. Yeah, that's why she's just called heroin. And I love that (laughs) neither of you can spell. So you called her heroin like the drug. (laughs) Okay, I can spell and I spell that correctly. (laughs) I don't know. I liked this episode of God Awful Movies, but it was weird that Heath spent 45 minutes in the middle Tearfully correcting all of his spelling on air. I, I don't know. It's a fun podcast, but they've gotten weird. So yeah, they they grumble at each other. And I want to point out that Zoe, right? Zoe is doing somewhere between like I spit on your grave remake and 
Christian Bale Batman, yeah. but she can't really decide given scene to scene in the movie. So in this scene, her dad's like, you need to go back to therapy. And she's like, I don't want to go back to therapy. I see my dead cancer, mom. And he's like, all right, your friend is here to pick you up for school. So she she goes to school. But wait, even before she leaves for school, he's doing this whole thing about we need to go to therapy. And also, like, you can't wear my what what war was Thomas Jane in? Like, it must be <laughs> Afghanistan, right? Like, how old yeah. is he supposed to be? Yeah, he was like they're going for the like a war. Vietnam vet thing. But like this movie is way too current for that to make <laughs> yeah. any sense. Yeah, <laughs> she wears his war jacket and it's definitely a Vietnam era war jacket that became like part of the fashion. Yeah. And then he like shames her. Because she's never actually been to war. <laughs> like, this is like an actual right. through line of the movie. Like, you don't have any authentic war experience. Stolen valor. Yeah, and she's like, Dad, I'm like 17. Like, what is even happening? <laughs> yeah, but her friend picks her up. And now it's time for some teen banter, as written by people who work for Ben Shapiro. <laughs> And this is the first of many instances in the film where they're like, hey, check it out. We're not conservative and backward. We're hip to the woke liberals. There's a black kid in the movie and he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and they talk about prom. And isn't it stupid that kids are always asking each other to prom? And right. black love interest might as well be like, will you go to pr with me as she says isn't it stupid that people ask each other to prom? <laughs> Wait, don't they say that one of the senior pranks is that, like, somebody ordered Thai food? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how is that a what? prank? That's like lunch. <laughs> Was that like a racial comment? Yeah, unclear. Oh, unclear. I yeah, I do. Like, this is the beginning of the fact that this film is all exposition and no character development. E exactly, yes. It's, it's just verbal <laughs> diarrhea to explain... You know, I I am a multidimensional character. Let me tell you why. Oh, because my mother recently died of cancer. And also I am troubled youth. And also I am the kind of child who does not want to engage with the popular kids. And also there's a multiracial love interest that's happening right now, which makes us woke. And speaking of exposition, look at this other weird loner character in a field right next to us right now. <laughs> He seems to be doing weird stuff because he's misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And he drives a pedo van, yeah. which apparently they borrowed from the co-executive producer. <laughs> yeah, that, that made me uncomfortable. My dad literally had this same van for his oh, no. moving. He, he, he was a sculptor. He had to move sculptures. He had to get a big van. He was, But it's the same van. Did it have like green shag carpet? Because in every episode of Forensic Files, that's how they find no, the guy because they're no, like green shag it, fibers it was, on the dead body. It was a brown shag carpet. There. <laughs> <laughs> Different. They'll never convict him now. So now it's time for typical American high school. And the only reason I include this scene, nothing happens, but we see some seniors like putting underwear up on a flagpole. And I just wanted to say that you'll never convince me that someone didn't hang Ben Shapiro from a flagpole by his <laughs> underwear for their senior prank. I know that in my heart to be true. That happens like at the Daily Wire prank day. Like that, <laughs> that happened last week to him. No, his wife did that to him like yesterday morning. That was ben? like their morning ritual. You gotta let me. I'm a doctor. So now she's going to go to class and we're going to meet her wacky best friend. Yeah. And she's, you know, a singer and look, you did so well in your recording. And and now there's like a po like a prom thing with people in Shakespeare costumes, because that's a thing that happens. <laughs> Not at my school. And then, oh, by the way, this is the first part where this question starts kind of getting confusing in my head. It, we'll come back to it later. But like, why is this school so big? when it's in the middle of nowhere. This is a great yeah. question. It's a weirdly well-funded school. Yeah, it's a weirdly well-funded school and it's enormous, which we will realize plays out in many ways later. But for some reason, there are like four cops in the whole city. Um, <laughs> moving on past that. This this movie cannot decide if it's like Huxon Junction, Tennessee <laughs> or Austin, Texas. Exactly. Given from scene to scene. Yes, yeah, or a right. sprawling mansion in Essex County, England that has this <laughs> giant school. Yeah. Yeah, there's like this like mahogany furniture in the classroom. Yeah. And all the teachers are like young and hot and like edgy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. There did I did I see this wrong? Was there a couch in the Spanish room? 
There like was a, a really couch comfortable in couch room. in the middle of the Spanish room. No, I think you're right. You're right. And so they're in this class. I'm not sure what class it is at this point, but the teacher is like this, you know, excited gay character. He's basically the caricature of what it means to be LGBTQ in every movie where people have no concept because they have no friends in real life that are LGBTQ because, of course, they are alt-right assholes. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. The people who wrote this movie did not understand how to represent a gay character. And I really think that what they were trying to do throughout this movie was to sort of Trojan horse this movie into mainstream America and be like, maybe liberal people will accept this because it's inclusive and they won't realize (laughs) that we're trying to feed them alt-right propaganda, but they get all of the stereotypes wrong. Like they're, they just make everybody a caricature yep. of themselves. Yeah. This is a hundred percent Ben Shapiro's quote, funniest friend doing his <laughs> <Yeah>. classic <laughs> gay teacher bit that he does at the bar. Yeah. It's awful. Right. Right. Who actually is gay, but Ben kind of deals with it by saying, hate the sin, not the sinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah, we have some time with sassy gay teacher and now we're in science class And I just want to say I approve of the fact that movie science class is 99% explosions, okay? Real science (laughs) class doesn't have anywhere near as many explosions. Kara, I need you to get 50% more explosions in science classes by Monday. Get on it. (laughs) Oh, I love explosions. I'm totally down for this. There you go. See? This is our new initiative, Eli. (laughs) Okay, but like big explosions in a class? Like, yeah. Can't we just explain that hydrogen explodes? Like, I don't need a demo and a visual aid for that. I understand that entirely. What What is wrong with you? Yeah. Of course you need the demo and the visual aid. These people are teaching public school. This is the highlight of this woman's year. So, like, sir. I'm going to be walking around with my giant bag of hydrogen and forget because I didn't get a visual aid that that explodes and then I'm going to hurt myself? <laughs> no. It could happen. <laughs> but no. Yeah. After class, the, the teacher pulls Zoe aside and she's like, Zoe, um... We're so bad at writing that we need to exposit some more. You used to be a good student. (laughs) Then your mom died. Now you're a bad student. And Zoe's like, yeah, well, I can't wait to get out of this town. And the teacher's like, I'm sorry, did you actually say the line, I can't wait to get out of this town? (laughs) Was that a placeholder that no one replaced? And she's like, exit, stage left, Batman voice. Lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum. (laughs) (laughs) So now we cut to her locker where Zoe has gotten a promposal from uh, love interest. We also get a scene where something in a field explodes. Oh, right. (laughs) I'm going to explain this now because the movie fails to explain it. So one thing that I should point out about this movie is that it, it is very much less an action movie than it is like an instruction manual for school shooters. And hey, Ben (laughs) Shapiro made the movie, so I fucking get it. What this is supposed to be, we'll see a bunch of stuff exploding randomly and never have it explained, is the school shooter, in order to throw off the cops, set off explosions in abandoned fields around town Mm -hmm. so that when the cops did try to get to the school, they would get slowed down by the explosions that the firemen were at. Yeah. yeah, and we'll dig deeper into the calculus of this, I think, when we get to that <laughs> point in the movie, because it's it's a little hard to get past. But you're right. There are these bucket bombs that they built and put around town. What I think they were going for, and any have, have any of you guys seen the, the Showtime documentary series Active Shooter? No, I have not. It's very good. It's hard to watch, but it's very good. It's basically, I don't want to call it the palate cleanser after watching this movie because it's like the palate (laughs) fire. Like it's the opposite of a palate cleanser, but what it will do is like remind you of the, not the sanctity, but like the respect that is actually required of these kinds of horrific incidents. And what they do really well in Active Shooter is they really describe the victims, they really describe the circumstances, and they also talk about how important it is not to elevate the perpetrators. Okay. That we've done a real disservice in the news by saying their names, yeah, by giving them any sort of infamy. And they do a real deep dive on 
Columbine and bust a lot of myths around Columbine. You know, there's so many crazy myths that came out after, and it's just really hard to undo the news stories that were blatantly incorrect during the unfolding of Columbine. Right. And I think what they were going for with this film is something along the lines of like, what if the Columbine perpetrators had actually not been so inept? Yeah. Because they actually had a lot of these plans in place, but nothing worked. And that's why so, I shouldn't say so few, because a lot of people still died, but Columbine could have been so much worse if they hadn't been so inept. Yeah. Well, if a show called Active Shooter can be the lemon sorbet to your movie yeah. as a cleanse, yeah. that's a bad sign. Well, yeah, very and bad sign. By the way, this movie will reinforce all the untrue beliefs about Active Shooters. Yeah, exactly. This might as well be called, wrong again, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, an English teacher reads an apropos quote about the movie. I love this movie trope. It's in every movie, not yeah. just Christian ones. But <laughs> when we make God awful movies, the movie, the English teacher is absolutely going to be reading something about what it's like to be in a Christian movie. <laughs> Oh. Also, I just want to point out that this is a Proust quote that comes right before the like, man, I wish I could put her penis in my mouth. I'm just saying, <laughs> Ben, I know you took huh. it out of context, but this is, this is right before a big section on how much how delicious balls must taste. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's so true. Also, can I, there was like a thing for me where I was really confused because on their way to school, they watch, you know, loner kid plant a bomb. We know that now. It was mm -hmm. a bucket bomb. Yeah. And then they like keep driving a long way to school. They're out in the middle of nowhere in a field. But then she's sitting in class and sees the smoke coming from the bucket bomb. And it's like just around the corner. Yeah, they forgot. And I'm really confused about the geography. And also the bucket bomb was very small, but the smoke was as if a tire factory was on fire. <laughs> right. Yeah. And she just saw that. And was like, that's nothing. And she ignores the giant cloud of black smoke and doesn't tell anybody something might be wrong. Yep, she does. And speaking of bombs, now we cut to one of the other mass shooters, who I very tastefully in my notes have called bitch tits, planting a bomb by loudly yelling, I'm not planting a bomb in the office. <laughs> Love yeah. this. He's like, <laughs> so this guy literally wants everybody to remember him. I think he's like, nothing to see here. Very cool. Very cool. That was the line. Hello, I'm normal student. Student. I'm just student, but you know, remember me. I'm holding two things now. One. Don't worry about it. Bye. <laughs> it's a big deal that he leaves a bag in the office there. That's like, yeah, yeah, the bomb or one of the bombs. Why is the administrative assistant for the school? At, the, at the, the front desk of the office? Yeah, the front desk yeah. lady. Why is she so mean? Well, to be fair, he does enter the room being like, hello today, bomb, not bomb, goodbye today. <laughs> Sorry, did you say bomb, not bomb? Is that what you <laughs> said? I love you. Is it So uh, are we landed on it's not bomb and then I can ignore this? Yes. <laughs> okay. Please do. And, and please ignore it for the entire rest of the movie. Even yeah. once you're well aware that there's an active shooter situation, don't worry about that dusty backpack that's in plain <laughs> okay. view. I guess. I mean, if I see something, I should not say something. That's what you're telling yeah, me, student? That is this character's policy. Okay. Yeah. Clearly. Inconspicuous. Go, go on about your day. So we cut back to Zoe and she's being awkward around love interest because she doesn't want to go to prom because her <laughs> mom is dead. And the only reason I point this out is, one, it's the reason she goes to the bathroom and therefore doesn't get shot in the initial mass shooting, which yeah. is coming right up, everybody. But also... There's this great moment where he's like, yeah, you know, I just don't want you to shut down. And she goes, you think I'm shut down? And I wanted him so badly to be like, N no, you're just a bad actor. You're not a good actor. <laughs> so you seem Aww. shut down. Betraying emotion. She's like, what do you want me to do? I'm working with a really shitty script. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. She carries the movie. She had like the hardest role for sure. Because she goes from troubled youth to like Ash with his boomstick. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a real spark to her character. Yeah. And you know, she had to deal with fucking Ben Shapiro on the set or whoever his asshole producers are doing that like coachy gross thing with her <laughs> as this younger woman and them as this creepy older man, like standing behind her and like teaching her how to play pool for no reason. It's not in the movie. <laughs> yes. I'm also just imagining this deer carcass being wheeled into every scene for no reason. They're trying just, to pass it off as crafty. <laughs> staring at her. You have venison. So she goes to the bathroom and some girl hides something in the ceiling and then goths her way out of the bathroom because yes, 
one of the school shooters, because they need to hit all the untrue stereotypes, is a goth kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, one of the school shooters is a girl, which is like never happened in the history of shootings. Oh, like, OK, yeah. I think I found I found a stat somewhere. Wait, have we ever had a school shooter who's not a, you know, cishet white guy? I don't know about a school shooting, but I did start to dig deep on this. And there's OK. In the period between 1966 and 2012 of the 292 mass shootings, so that includes any shooting with four victims or more who died, only one perpetrator was female. Yes. Okay. And usually the female perpetrators, from what I understand, are either with men or they're lone perpetrators who are retaliating against something. But yeah, it's very, very, very rare. It's very rare in general for women to commit murder. And most of the time when women commit murder, it's either against an abusive partner or she's killing her kids. Yeah. Which is crazy because I know so many women with great excuses to murder. Right? <laughs> yeah. I know like two dudes who I'm like, yeah, you should probably murder someone. But like nine tenths of the women I know are like, oh, let me tell you who I should murder. And I'm like, yeah, you yeah, should fucking that's murder that guy. Totally legit right there. Yeah. You, you want someone said. to dig for you? I could dig. <laughs> And to be clear, and yet they don't. Spoiler alert, which we will get back to. There are two women murderers in this movie. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, there are. That <laughs> yeah. is true. But yeah, Goth Girl hides something, and and Zoe goes up into the ceiling to check it out. And I just wrote in my notes, it's it's drugs, man. That's if definitely someone is hidden something in the ceiling. It's Clearly. always drugs. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Also, there are four shooters. Yes. Let's be clear about this. There are four. They detail or they show four different shooters, which I'm not sure if that's ever happened either. No, of course not. They they just needed to hit all four incorrect stereotypes about mass shooters. Yeah, it's like it's usually just one person or a t like a small group, like a like two people. And there's usually one of the stronger kind of people and the other per person who's the supporter. And they're almost always cis white men with right leaning tendencies who are part of either an incel group or an <laughs> alt right, you know, racist group. Yep. Yeah, I don't know the stats, but. I would imagine almost every single school shooter we've ever had reads from the Daily Wire. Like, yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't say that, say that conclusively. I don't have they the stats. They needed to make up these four Pretty stereotypes because an accurate depiction of school shooters is their fucking audience. Their subscribers. Yeah, an accurate depiction is Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, now it's time for the van to smash through the wall. Yeah, I kind of like that scene. I, I don't see how this was necessary <laughs> to smash a van through the wall. Like they could have just walked in. Why don't you like any of the fun scenes in this movie? You don't want any of the explosions, any of the any of the cars crashing into the okay. cafeteria. There was, I did enjoy one moment of this because the van smashes through the wall of the cafeteria and we watch everybody run out of the way because they hear a van coming in. So they scatter and then the van smashes through and then they cut to the van stopped with a kid under the front tires just laying there. Oh, shit. Out of nowhere. So, like, a really smart survivor just, like, <laughs> walked over and was like, I'll pretend I'm under the tire, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, that is smart. Isn't it? Well, one other thing I love about this is that they cut to Zoe during this, like, first initial shooting, and they're trying so hard to be gritty and dark, right? Oh, look, it's we're going to show a mass shooting. Look at us at the Daily Wire. We're so hardcore. Except they're idiots so Zoe doesn't hear the shooting because she's using a hand dryer. Yeah, she <laughs> Yep. And I got to say, <laughs> if this whole movie had just been a mass shooting taking place while Zoe gets into more and more comedic accidents in the background, I kind of would have loved it, right? She's like, oh, no, shaving cream. Whoop, 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 whoop. God. Yeah. And this is the first of many situations where you're literally like, how did nobody else hear that? Yeah. Like, I, I probably said that 40 times in this film. Everybody in this school has noise-canceling headphones that are amazing. And all time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can, okay. Can we talk about the worst line in the movie that happens right here? Ooh. Yes, please. The absolute worst line. It was so horrible. So, big bad guy smashes the van through the thing, steps out of the, the van and says, trigger warning. Ah. Uh, because he's got a gun. Yeah. And he, and he shot some people. I have so many questions about this line. Oh, my God. Those woke lefties, they're pussies. Because it's they make their living by being like, trigger warning, am I right? But then they've got their school shooter saying it in their movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so, like, mm -hmm. 
I feel like the computer that's inside Ben Shapiro's head must have just fucking exploded when he wrote this line. Trigger warnings, bad. But bad guys say trigger warnings, bad. Good, bad, <laughs> bad, good, good, bad. Oh. No, Eli, you're so right. Like, the whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm wondering, is this ironic or unironic? They don't know. <laughs> what is he going for? It, I think it's both. I, I think it's actually both. Like, the amount of evil that went into writing that line is staggering. Yeah. They're in the writer's room, and somebody's probably like, hey, you know what I'd say if I was doing a school shooting? And everybody was like, trigger warning at the same time. <laughs> and they wrote a movie around that amazing line that they high-fived about and got really excited when they come up with it right there. Yes. Oh, no, they're literally sitting around the writing table, like masturbating under the table while they're <laughs> oh, writing this movie. No I would say question. over the table. Over, yeah, it's the grossest because, and that's the thing I had to keep bringing myself back to because- the sad thing about this movie is once again, it's actually relatively well produced. Mm. And so as you're watching it, there are times when you get sucked in. There are times when you're like on edge or there are times when you want to see what happens next. And then you're like, oh, no, this is fucking school shooting porn. Yep. This is exactly. a really gross exactly masturbatory exposition of people who are enjoying this and think it's entertainment and it's disgusting. It's school shooting porn for an audience they know contains school shooters. Yeah. Right. They are aware that their audience contains school shooters, which is why in our next scene, it's time for the bad guy to bad guy monologue. This will make up I'm going to roughly say nine hours of the movie will be this <laughs> B-minus right. actor who Heath and Kara think is ready for his next Oscar. Just Oh, no, he's really good. He's Unfortunately, good. You guys he's never going to work again after this. Correct. He is really good. Yeah. This is Tristan. You're talking about Tristan, the main Tristan, bad guy, yeah, right? yeah, the main bad guy. He's so mediocre. What? No, he's, he's good. He's, he, he hits the nail on the head of that stereotype, that caricature, to be clear, of the kind of charming, debonair, semi-attractive, yet narcissistic and absolutely psychopathic yeah. school shooter. And in a way, it's like they did their homework because the truth of the matter is what we usually want to think and what the media usually plays into is that most school shooters are these like troubled, bullied kids. And they they go, they go there. That's also the subplot of all the other school shooters. But the ringleader... Tristan is is basically just a narcissist and he wants power. And that's yeah. kind of what happened in Columbine. And he nails what the director was clearly telling him. What Ben Shapiro or whoever the director is wanted him to do was be that character. Mm -hmm. It's a horrible character. It's oh, yeah. evil. But he does but it well. He acts it well as he was directed to, I would say. Agree. Yeah. I hated it so much. <laughs> also, come on. You got to admit this first moment is hilarious. Just objectively hilarious. So he's like, all right, I'm going to give him a big speech. And he sees a bully named Roy, like a football jock guy who had bullied him. And he's like, hey, Roy, you're a bully. You always bullied me. Seems like the power dynamic is finally. And then blam, he gets <laughs> Roy gets shot in the face by one of the henchmen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The muscle. The crazy muscle, henchman. Chris. And yeah. Tristan is so fucking mad. He's like, Chris, what the fuck are you do? I was doing my power dynamic speech <laughs> and you ruined it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Chris is just like, sorry, I'm an idiot who has his machine gun. Yeah. Sorry, my my mental illness will be the focus of my character. <sighs> so I just I randomly know. fire my gun. <laughs> it's so bad. So they did, right? Like that was clear to everybody that they're playing this kid up as the like, it's not a gun problem. It's a mental health problem. Yeah. Like he's that talking point. Oh, he may as well set the gun down and be like, see, the gun's not killing anybody. It's me. Uh, sorry, Ben Shapiro made me do this. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, Tristan's giving his apparently masterful performance as a well-spoken <laughs> murderer here. Did you guys like Crazy Kid's performance too? How he like pooped in his hand and threw it at everyone every time he was on the screen. I, thought it was I just want to know what the acting barometer we're going for. Okay. <laughs> Point is... Listen, it's better than Gramps. I don't know. My scale's fucked up. <laughs> it's okay. We can reheal you. We can heal you. I don't think you can. We can teach you what movies are again. I like that you can reheal him as if this has happened before. <laughs> it has, though. Yeah. So Zoe's climbing through the ceiling because 
they had to make an action movie and they just stole all the beats from Die Hard. (laughs) For sure they did. So at this point, there's a van that broke through in a wall. And I'm talking like a glass and brick wall of a school cafeteria. There are multiple gunshots. And I can't remember if anything has exploded yet. It would have been amazing if the van just smashed through the wall and stopped and they were like, ah, (laughs) Fuck. You're right. You're right. It just bounced All off. All right. Guys, guys, they're yelling through the glass. Guys, just wait there. I'm going to do a speech in a second. I'm going to walk around the side. <laughs> just give me a second. Nobody move. Hey. Plan B, plan B. But yeah, so all of this has happened and nobody has called 911 and literally nobody else in the school heard a peep. Nope. Nothing. To be clear. They will be unaware of this until the movie needs them to be. Yeah, this is this is what they expect us to believe at this yeah. point. So Zoe's climbing through the ceiling, but then wouldn't you know it, she falls through the roof of the cafeteria so tristan that's charming bad guy sends henchman that's crazy bad guy to check out the noise and kill it and (laughs) i just have to say crazy guy's performance in this scene it's like a heath sketch he's like lulu lulu looking for you (laughs) trying to (laughs) trying to kill you now he narrates what he's doing it's so funny (laughs) this is genuinely funny he's like hello Lone wolf protagonist, I imagine, whose name hasn't been revealed yet. Maybe Zoe. Let me look on (laughs) IMDb. Hold on. (laughs) Yes, your name is Zoe. Uh, I'm going to name the stuff I see now. And he's walking through it. He's like, there's a hole in the ceiling. I don't know why you'd walk in here and fuck up the ceiling. But I'm looking for you. (laughs) It was so funny. And this is very dark. At this point in the film, I'm going like, why did they make this movie? Jesus, this is dark. Like, this is gratuitous. It's masturbatory. And it's like, I literally wrote, you guys, I can't tell what's good and bad anymore. This movie just feels sad to me. Like, it's just really sad. Yeah. it's What is this? Well, and it's a good thing because they're now going to answer what the point of this movie is because we're going to switch back to our bad guy. Right. We're going to see the cops having a hard time getting to the school or something. And now the bad guy is going to spend an entire scene monologuing about how mass shooting preventative measures don't work. (sighs) Yeah, you're right. Right. Because his four man team of stereotypes that don't exist and don't happen in mass shootings have managed to cut the phone lines to the school. And that, like, run, hide, fight doesn't work. I mean, this this monologue could not more clearly be a message to mass shooters. They could have included a blueprint of local high schools with the DVD to this thing. Oh, yeah, I wrote, is this like the anarchist cookbook for school shooters? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I wrote right here. Sure and, like, I don't even get kind of the point because he's literally talking about how exactly what you said, all these preventive measures don't work yet. He's in a school that is lacking all of those preventive measures. Like there is no system. There's nothing. And at this point, everybody would be on lockdown, but somehow nobody even knows this is happening. Yeah. Right. It makes no sense. But while he's (laughs) monologuing, Zoe makes it out. And she's about to run into the woods to safety when she turns around and realizes that she's got to get in there and single-handedly take those school shooters down. Yep. Cool. She just rises out of the chemistry sink like Rambo all of a sudden. (laughs) All right. Well, it looks like we're set up for an absurd revenge fantasy. But first, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I guess we'll find out which side of that fantasy Ben Shapiro is on. Run, hide, fight. Coming up next. Psst. Psst. Kara. Kara. Oh, Jesus. My eyes. What what are you guys doing in my room? Who keeps pepper spray right by their bed? That's nuts. Thank you. I do. I do after you guys woke me up the other night to ask me if Keegan-Michael Key is nice in person. That was an emergency. Yes. What do you want? Um, we're kind of hungry. Yeah, and we're out of food at our place. Man, that burns so much. Go to the grocery store or a restaurant or almost anywhere that is not my house. Uh, Maybe you haven't heard, Kara, but it's not safe to go places right now. So So I don't know about that. If it's not safe to go places, why would it be safe to come to my house? Just go to the grocery store. Because you got a famous person vaccine. Yeah, I heard you got to meet Tom Hanks. Is he nice? I work at a hospital. What are you talking about? General Hospital? My mom loves that show. Good for you. Good for you. Good for Uh, you. Look, guys, if you're looking to fill the fridge, why don't you try HelloFresh? What's... Dead dad. Dead dad. I call dead dad. Do it. 
But you get like two more. Two more. I get at least two more. What's Hello Fresh? They're America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in like 30 minutes or less. I don't know, Kara. Meal box delivery? We like a variety with our food. Plus, I've got special diets that need to be accommodated. I know you do. Listen, HelloFresh offers 23 plus recipes each week featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients. So you're never going to get bored. And of course, they've got locale, carb smart, vegetarian, pescatarian options. They're going to suit your needs. So whatever you choose, every single recipe is packed with fresh produce sourced directly from farmers. It's great. That does sound great. It is good. HelloFresh sent us a box to try, and not only was the food delicious, but because all the ingredients come in their own bags, it unpacked in seconds. Also, Kara, do you have milk for my eyes? Fridge. Okay. Okay, Kara, so how do I try HelloFresh? Found it. Found the milk. <laughs> Just go to HelloFresh.com slash GAM10 and use code GAM10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Ah, this is lemon juice. Yeah, so just go to HelloFresh.com slash G-A-M-1-0 and use code GAM10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's right. Who has a carton of lemon juice in their fridge? Tom Hanks does. He told me about it when I got my vaccine. Wait, really? No. Oh, so burned. What's he like? <laughs> hup, 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 hup. Hey, guys, what are you doing? Oh, we're playing razor ball. Yeah, razor ball. That looks, uh, I don't know, super dangerous. Super dangerous? Oh, it is. Yeah. That's why we're responsible razor ball owners mm -hmm. for safety. You are? Yeah. 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 We took a weekend long course. Well, this is four hours. But right. Yeah. A course. Yeah. That seems like a really, really short course for a ball made out of literal razors. <laughs> Here we go again. Another anti razor ball person who knows nothing about razor balls. Yeah. They're actually made out of plastic and covered in the metal razors. It's yeah. not all yeah. metal. So maybe learn something about razor balls before you criticize them. Like learn something. Like, do you even know exactly how many razors are in slash around every kind of razor ball ever? She probably doesn't. No, I don't. But honestly, I don't exactly. need to memorize trivia to see that a razor ball is a dangerous uh, item. Yes, you do have to memorize, memorize trivia. trivia yeah. And besides, we're responsible about it. When we're done playing with razor ball, we lock it in our razor ball safe. Twice, actually. Yeah. Two locks. Twice. Plus, Kara, what if we get attacked by ninjas? Then we'll need our razor ball. Yeah. Okay, so how are you going to get out your razor ball to fight ninjas if it's in a safe twice? We um, do the combination twice. Yeah, twice. We just do it. We would just do it twice. So, so the razor ball's easy and fast to just like get out of the safe. <sighs> no, no, no. So then explain to me, how is it going to help you fight the ninjas? It, ju it, it just would, okay? You it want would us help to get killed by ninjas. You're need, pro we ninja. We need it for fighting ninjas. <sighs> Look, guys. I know you like your hobby, and deep down, you think you're going to use it to fight ninjas, but you're not. You're not going to use it to fight ninjas. You're just going to hurt yourself and probably other people, too. And if you actually care about the health and well-being of others more than your own weird hobby, I think you should just give up the razor ball. Mm. Still no. Yeah, no. no. Besides, if Heath gave up the razor ball, all he'd have left is incest porn. Nah, you would. That, that's not. No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, Eli, are you okay? Uh, completely unexpected. Nothing to be done. No idea why this happened. Uh, okay. We're going to get emails because of this sketch. Yeah, but not from people who are right. No, not from people who are right. You guys are idiots. Yes, we are. And we're back. And now that Tristan and Chris finally finished up their whispery sidebar fight, <laughs> it's time for more of the big evil speech which is mostly Fox News talking points snuck into a speech from the mouth of a terrorist, to be clear. And I guess, I guess that tracks. That's yep. kind of their thing. Yeah. How are they okay with this? Like, how is, how is the irony? They're just like, yes, this is... Awful. Uh, it just hurts my brain to think about the fact that they're completely blissfully unaware. It's really not clear which side of the <laughs> fantasy they're on at any given moment. Oh, I really I, can't it's tell. plenty fucking clear to me. Yeah, no, it's clear, but it's not made clear to the audience. It's like, 
You ever see a little kid do something shitty and they don't know how to lie yet? So you'll be like, hey, did you rub chocolate milk all over your face? Is that why you look like that? And they're like, no, um, um, there was a chalk. What happened was that's how Ben Shapiro pretends not to be pro mass shooter in his fucking movie. Right. But then he periodically just goes, I love chocolate milk on my face. And then he comes right back to the lie. And yeah. you're like, whoa, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this is where he's going to talk about how silly it is to have an unarmed security guard. Oh, that's the point of that. God, this is so Eli. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always confused. Yeah, the unarmed security guard ends up n- being ineffective and then pisses himself. Yeah, literally pees his pants. I wrote that as a joke before it happened. I was like, yeah, don't bother. Don't worry about the security guard. He's just going to pee his pants and run away. Except the security guard literally pees his pants and runs away. Yeah. Well, and I'm watching this with somebody and they're like, what is that supposed to be funny? Of course that's going to happen. His life is threatened. Yeah. Like it's not uncommon for people to urinate uncontrollably when they think they're about to die because they're so afraid. Like that's the thing. They, they're playing it like, what a pussy. This guy pissed his pants. And it's like, yeah, you would too, motherfucker. And let's keep in mind that their counter here is like, the same untrained security guard, but with a fucking handgun would have been like, that's all right, motherfucker. Make my day. Pew, pew. Yeah. But really, he would have just pissed his pants and then shot himself in the foot. He- <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's what would have happened. Well, if he's armed and he's somebody who carries a gun and wants to use it like I would imagine some security guards are. They'd be having a gunfight in a room full of kids right now. Mm-hmm. That's what would be happening. Yeah, only bad things would have come from that, as we all know. Ben Shapiro wants you to go, oh, if only there were a gunfight going on in this room full of children. Yeah. And it's not like we don't have evidence, like actual scientific evidence, where there have been school shootings simulated, where some people had guns and some people didn't. Like they use paintball guns or beanbag guns. I don't remember. And what always happens? More people die. The more people that are armed, the more people die. Yes. Huh. In my favorite thing about this particular study, they did one where they armed the teachers and teachers shot students 100% of the time. Yeah, of course they did. (laughs) They're just like, okay, here's your beanbag gun. Pet. Okay, I handed that to you eight <laughs> seconds ago, <laughs> Mrs. Because who, th- think about your high school teacher. Can you think of a person, any of them, can you think of any of a person in the world you would like less to have a gun than any of your high school <laughs> fucking <laughs> teachers? <laughs> oh. And speaking of high school teachers, now we're going to cut back to another classroom where a teacher is teaching about the Alamo. You know, that time when having a bunch of guns would have come in handy. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, yeah, so we lost the Alamo, as everybody knows, because, you know, those American Texans couldn't get AR-15s with bump stocks at Walmart. So that was problematic. (laughs) And this is, I'm going to say, the the rock smash was pretty funny, but this is the hardest I laughed in the movie. The girls, right? Zoe and sassy best friend, they run up and they bang on the window and they're like, there's a school shooter, there's a school shooter. And their teacher's like, all very funny girls and closes the window shade and the hero of the movie gives up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like, oh, well, she closed the shade. <laughs> and it's like, it's so crazy because they're like, hamana, 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 hamana. I can't clearly express myself. Oh my God, hamana, hamana. When all they had to do was go <laughs> active shooter situation. <laughs> Like, very clearly, everybody would have frozen. But instead, they're like, hamada, hamada, this is fun. <laughs> I really want more action movies to do this, right? Like, get to the chopper. What? Never mind. <laughs> Just like action heroes <laughs> who instantly give up on people when they don't listen to them. <laughs> so, yeah. And we should point out that Tristan is making all of the students live stream him while he bad guy monologues. Right, which to me is not a bad plot point. Right. That's what would happen, I it think. It makes yeah. sense. It's it's something that probably would happen. What I don't understand is why our love interest keeps his hand up. Like they say, how many of you have more than 50 viewers? More than 100? More than 500? And all the hands slowly go down. And he keeps his hand up. Like, oh, I love to be the last person with my hand up facing a school shooter. <laughs> right. That's my goal in life. Kara, you know how influencers are. They always need to partner with big brands. He saw an opportunity. <laughs> it's no, all about brand synergy, Kara. That, that is what's happening, though. <laughs> because yeah. this character is he's supposed to be the good guy, Lewis. 
and he's like, oh, he yeah. has a name too. Yeah. Oh, he, he uh, I actually looked him up on IMDb okay. right now okay. in, while <laughs> yeah. I was watching. This is how I found out his name was Lewis. And he takes being the documentarian of this very seriously throughout the rest of the movie. Well, he's very artsy. And very he's like, artsy. He gets some great shots of the killer. Right. So he's getting the scoop. Now Zoe figures out to pull the fire alarm. By the way, we're like 30 minutes into the movie before Zoe's like, right, fire alarm, that alarm for everyone leaving the building, right? Wait, but two very important things happen before she pulls Ooh. the fire alarm. Mm -hmm. One, they make a build a wall reference. Yes, they God. do. <laughs> so stupid. It's like, it's not that hard to build a wall, he says. Oh my gosh. And then later, he goes on this tirade about how they're not Nazis. Because, of course, Nazis love to talk about how they're not actually Nazis. <laughs> yeah, but again, right. part of their target audience is Nazis. So you can watch the people who wrote this script walking the line of not offending the Nazis too much. She's like, yes, we're not yes, Nazis. So I mean, right. I, some of my best friends are Nazis. I don't know why I'm putting this in my movie. <laughs> like in Ben Shapiro's mind, he's like, see, it works on like two levels, like a Disney movie where like the parents think it's really funny, but also the kids don't quite get the edgy <laughs> humor. <laughs> but like for Nazis and liberals, like but that's how he thinks he's making this movie. And humans. Yeah. Also, when we get the build a wall line, again, it's obviously supposed to be a line about the Trump wall, but we watch them then make a wall along the cafeteria window of cafeteria tables on wheels with slats. So it's like literally a completely ineffective wall that we watch people look through later. The cops oh, yeah. see through it. Isn't that exactly like Trump's wall? Yeah. <laughs> like you can see right through it. Yeah. It's it's not that hard to build an ineffectual wall was the original line in the script. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she pulls the fire alarm, but wouldn't you know it, goth girl is going to disable the fire alarm with a wrench. Because I don't know if you know this, there's a big box in the center of every building with a fire alarm. And if you smack it hard enough with an object, all of the alarms in the building turn off. Yeah. And also... Wouldn't a wouldn't a school that rich be fitted with like sprinklers? Oh, you'd think for sure. Maybe a backup system. Maybe not a button that says "Don't press this, please." Yeah, <laughs> override <laughs> alarm in case of school shooting. <laughs> oh, and like, lo wouldn't a school with that much money have the automatic lockdown things? I've seen this in a lot of schools where all the doors close and lock from the inside. Yes. Yes, but if they actually addressed any of the things that they used to stop school shootings, the rest of this movie would just be Tristan being like, oh, because they locked us out. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Guess I'm going to prison now. Open it, please. No. Ah. My favorite part here is that goth girl is disabling the alarm in like some sort of janitorial closet. And then a janitor pops up out of nowhere. And I'm pretty sure it's John Voight. <laughs> 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 like... I couldn't find his credit in IMDb, but I want you guys to rewatch this oh. and tell me that's not John oh, Boyd. Yeah. He's a piece of shit Republican, so I know. it wouldn't surprise me if he was. I think he made on a weird a movie cameo. With ben but they put him in like a fat suit, so you can't quite tell. But it is, it is, it's so John, John Boyd. Boyd could just be fat right now. We don't know. Oh, that too. Yeah, could be. His daughter won't talk to him. Why <laughs> would she? Jesus. <laughs> so we cut over to the sheriff. He's held up by fire engines existing. <laughs> So at this point, I'm trying to explain to myself why there are all these cars parked on the street. And I'm looking back to the evidence that you see in active shooter situations where there's usually a perimeter around the school. And then all the parents who are really scared are starting to drive to the school. So they have to keep them behind the perimeter. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what we're seeing. And then I quickly realized, no, there are literally 50 cars clogging the road, but not really because you could clearly drive right between them. <laughs> you absolutely can. <laughs> because there was a, a shed fire. Because the, the, the yeah. active shooter put a bucket bomb in a tiny shed and it exploded right next to the road. Could have put it out in 10 minutes. Yeah. And the entire FBI of the entire region of the country is there <laughs> minutes later. It's the dumbest thing. Uh, this, this is the part I couldn't get past. That this was his, hey, look over there at that shiny thing moment. Yep. <laughs> it's so painful. And I just don't get, like, the sheriff's driving really slow. He's on the phone. And she keeps stopping. 
I guess, to like eavesdrop. So it's like, it's a woman driving the car and then the main sheriff is sitting in the passenger seat on the phone arguing with somebody and she keeps stopping. Like, how about you just drive there anyway and we'll work this out. You don't need to like wait. Active shooter, <laughs> not active shooter. Pizza, yeah, I mean, donuts. Could be Pizza. hostages, maybe not hostages. Let's sit here and figure that out until we drive to the school. We just watch her make a bunch of K turns. Okay, it's back to the fire. Now we're back to the fire with the shed. <laughs> Where there are no victims. <laughs> right. Oh my God. But yeah, they do eventually get there. One of the bombs has gone off. And the only reason I mention that is that as they pull up, another cop is just casually walking around in a circle, literally on fire. Yes, this does happen. He does not stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> just like they don't run, hide, fight in this film. Maybe he was trying to run, hide, fight the fire. And that was the problem. <laughs> yeah, he got Wait, is it stop, drop, and fight? Fuck. Uh, I, I don't know. dropped and rolled on top of those killers. That makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, Zoe got caught up in the bomb too. So she, we cut over to her. She wakes up coughing from bombs like you do when you're an action <laughs> movie hero. Yeah. <laughs> when everyone around you is dead, but somehow you keep surviving. Yeah. So she takes the cop's pepper spray and handcuffs. Uh, she has a little pep talk with dead mom for a second where her mom's like, yeah, you know, this is... um. This is pretty bad. And she's like, yeah, no, I know it is, mom. I know it is. And she's like, okay, well, um, you're going to go fight that goth girl in a second? She's like, yeah, in a couple of scenes, I'll go fight that goth girl. Okay. Wait, but before that even happens, mom is literally like, you know, dying's not that bad, but breastfeeding you. Yes. That was what? painful. That was confusing. It was really confusing. She's like, mom, what? You're like the expert on dead people. <laughs> like, what is happening? Who wrote this? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she gets a little sassy with him. Meanwhile, back in the school cafeteria, Active Shooter is bringing up the problem of evil because Christian movie. Oh, yeah. And don't worry, Ben Shapiro's got a great answer. The reason why God lets school shootings happen is so that he can send people to hell. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's like Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames. Free will is the answer here. Yeah. <laughs> it's all coming the, back the, together. The terrorist is literally like, Hey, so problem of evil, this is tricky for all you Christians, right? And one girl's like, no, free will. God lets you do this school shooting right now so he can judge you at some point. Oh, and she's like, again, unbelievably calm. Yeah. She's like, let's have a debate, school shooter. I know you're <laughs> armed, but I'd love to maybe push back on that statement a little. <laughs> okay, what? two minutes for rebuttal for you. <laughs> At any point, I thought there was going to be a subtitle just like, girl destroys school shooter with facts and logic. <laughs> <laughs> but the movie doesn't realize that the terrorist is making great points about this here. The terrorist is like, couldn't I just get judged and not kill all of you? No. Okay, moving on. I'm a terrorist who made a really good point about that just now. Yeah. 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 Then there's a really gross, like rapey scene with the Spanish teacher where he makes her take her top off. And again, it's, it's just school shooter fantasy. It was a nice reminder that I hate this movie and everyone associated with it. Like there's no saving them. But don't worry, just as I was about to get bummed by that, Zoe's going to fight goth girl in a room full of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are balloons on the floor. And she does this weird, like, leopard attack. Like, like, where did she come? She came from the sky. Yes. Did you guys notice that? There's, there's so much. Again, it's there's a really gross scene with the Spanish teacher that I don't want to dwell on because there's no jokes to make about it. No, it's just school shooter porn. And basically, probably what it did, to be honest, is like spark a bunch of 4chan channels where people are jerking off to this movie and plotting their own copycat versions. Right, That's the exactly. part that really scares me. It's gross. And just as I was like, Ugh. like I don't even want to do this movie, Goth Girl is hunting her in a room full of balloons and Goth Girl literally tries to shoot each individual balloon. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, pow. Okay, not in that balloon. Pow, not in that balloon. <laughs> but then, yeah, Zoe uh, jumps on her from the ceiling. They do gun struggles. And then Zoe, okay, so again, this is the idiots that made this movie. We've all seen the moment in a movie where it's struggle, struggle, gun goes off, bad guy falls down dead. Yeah. 
but these people are idiots. So it's not just gun goes off. She like slowly points the gun at goth girl's head and then slowly puts the gun into goth girl's mouth and then pulls back the trigger and then loads the gun and then cleans the gun. And then she shoots (laughs) goth girl with it. Well, and it's so weird too, because I'm pretty sure you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Goth girl's the one holding the gun. Zoe is doing that thing where she has her hands on the barrel Mm -hmm. and turns. It's a handgun though. So the short barrel and like turns it towards goth girl. Somehow she gets goth girl to pull the trigger. (laughs) Don't know how that happens. Second, wouldn't Zoe's hands like be blown up a little bit? Like, I don't know. I assume the people who wrote this movie are gun nuts. I am not a gun nut, but I'm pretty sure you can't hold your hand over the barrel of a gun while you shoot it. Yeah, you can't put your (laughs) finger in the end of a gun and it goes backwards like Bugs fucking bunny. (laughs) I'm pretty sure you have a horrific injury from that. But okay, we'll just we'll just put that aside. Yeah, she kills goth girl. And hey, now that we've lost goth girl, I'd like to take a moment for a PSA to our audience. Hey, audience, if you've ever watched a movie about school shooters, you've seen a goth girl who's a part of it. In real life, goth girls don't do school shootings. They have bad bands and write even worse poetry. Thanks for not murdering people, goth girls. We believe in you. Aww. So Zoe is going through goth girl stuff now that she's killed her. And the only reason I point this out is this entire scene while Zoe's like gearing up and ready to do the thing is all the like, they don't let cops do illegal stuff to stop school shootings. So it's it's literally just Sheriff Grumble standing out there being like, what do you mean we need a warrant to go into his house? What do you mean I'm not allowed to just walk into the school and shoot people? <laughs> what do you mean I'm not allowed the school shooter's phone number based on my whim and belief that he's the school shooter? <laughs> yeah. That would that would be a HIPAA violation. I'm just going to stand here and do nothing. I'm my hands are tied. My hands are tied by the liberal <laughs> cucks who write the law. Yeah. Also, did you guys notice that when Zoe is rifling through the goth girl stuff, she finds this big thing of hand sanitizer, and it's like very. Cl- this joke just doesn't land in 2021. No. No. They must have filmed this before the pandemic. I couldn't tell if they filmed it before the pandemic or if it was like a fucking liberals in their hand sanitizer. Oh, am I right? Have been. Oh, oh my god! Into That's the amazing. mind of Ben Shapiro, from whence we may never return. And now I understand the whole point of why, because I was so confused. I was like, for a publication that thinks that blue lives matter, they really do make the cops out to be fucking buffoons. Mm, yeah. But it's because they're oh, it's because they're like being all judgy about you know, regulation and habeas corpus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's that's the real enemy of this movie is yeah. the, the due laws process. that keep, exactly due process <laughs> and the control small towns have <laughs> over cops. But what's really weird is that those are libertarian laws. I mean, they're, they're liberal laws in the sense that they promote life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But this is something that both political parties agree on is that we don't want you know, illegal search and seizure. But for some reason, the people who wrote this movie feel like it's only okay to not want search and seizure if it's for like, you know, them. <laughs> but for anyone exactly. else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're supposed to be shooting Black Lives Matter. I don't know why they're shooting at us. Exactly. <laughs> we also cut back to the cafeteria here for a second. And Tristan is giving his speech and he gets interrupted by Lewis, who's like, hey, I turned on the uh, Q&A function on my <laughs> Facebook Live. And, oh, wait, uh, they're not in the cafeteria. This is when Tristan's like being really rapey with that woman. Yeah. That's why he did that. Is oh, he's right, like, they're in the Spanish Yeah, room. he's like, she's topless at this point because he's made her be topless on a live uh, stream. It's so gross. God. And so Lewis is like, hey, people are commenting to like distract him. Right. Oh, okay. Lewis was trying to distract him. Yeah. Which sort of worked. But then Tristan is like, yeah, actually, no, 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 that's a good idea. Let's, let's do a Q&A. Yeah, so he does. Yeah, I'm a narcissist. Let's do it. He takes a question. And the question was, uh, how'd you get the idea for a school shooting, Tristan? We're curious. And because he's this like ridiculously written, like evil version of Aaron Sorkin dialogue character. <laughs> he's like, well, really, the idea got me because I'm interesting and edgy. Well, and... Keep in mind why they put this in the movie, right? Hey, how'd you get this idea? 
the answer to that for all mass shooters, when you don't include gang violence, which is what the FBI has done to make it seem like white people and black people shoot the same amount of people, mm -hmm. is, oh, it's because I am a disaffected white man between the ages of 16 and 45. I just had a recent loss in my family. I suffer from depression and I pay too much attention to right wing media. So what they have the character say is. Ah, these things just happen. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't couldn't point to one reason. There are so Ooh, many. <laughs> not Ben Shapiro, I'll tell you that. Not Ben Post Shapiro. Truth Society, yada yada yada. <laughs> bright. No, I'm not going to say bright, bright. Just yada yada yada. I'm a terrorist now. <laughs> Nothing terrorist. in between. It's not because I think that you know. It's not because I'm an incel and think that women are property and owe men sex, and I never get laid. So because of that, I'm going to take my frustration out on all of the what do they call them? Chads and Stacy's. Stacy's. Yes, 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 yes. It's not because of that. Yep. But that's also not why he slit his mom's throat. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. We learned that he, he slit his mom's throat. Tristan killed his mom. We also learned that here. Great. Which is, you know, also kind of standard. Yep. Like, at least they did some homework. They just got confused mm -hmm. as they were oh, doing their Oh, is that standard? Homework. Like in re... Oh, yeah. 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 It's pretty standard. Great. It's the only accurate part of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we've got a young member of the Capitol Riot team doing a Q&A about his mass shooting and answering the questions like a Zen poet explaining a koan. That's fun. And by rule, that means we get another break. That's official. <laughs> but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. What's the sound of one hand domestic terrorizing? Would 43 senators vote to acquit Tristan? <laughs> Ben Shapiro's wife told him a wet vagina is a disease. That's not a question, <laughs> but we're just going to say that here again. Well, find out the answer to those first two questions and more when we return for the totally unexpected fight part <laughs> of Run, Hide, Fight. <laughs> Are you sure this is going to work? Hey, who's the scientist here? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Kara. Hey, Eli. Uh, okay. Eli, what's with the outfit? And... Carol, what's with the firearm? What's going on? Oh, this? No, no, no. This is a beanbag gun. I got it from a police auction. Cool. Cool. Still, same question, though. I feel like it's oh, still out there. Eli's dealing with some muscle tension. I sure am. Yeah, so I figured, hey, why don't we cover you in pillows and I can shoot you with a beanbag gun? It'll be just like a massage, but I don't have to touch you. Will it? I mean, that's what I told him. Okay, why don't you just use a Theragun? What's a Theragun? Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's quiet as an electric toothbrush. Really? Mm -hmm. Hey, that actually sounds a lot safer than this. So if we want to... Eli, Eli, shh. Scientist. Right, right. Yeah, and the Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using Theragun's signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. Plus, the OLED screen and design make you feel like you're holding something from the future. So just go to their site and check it out. And the Theragun app learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines. That sounds awesome. Right? It is. Theragun actually sent us a Theragun to try, and it was so good that me and Noah's wives stole ours. Eli, keep the pillow over your face. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, but that's got to be super expensive, right? Not at all. Try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's theragun.com slash awful. Theragun.com slash awful. Can, can we do that instead? Absolutely not. You ready? Yes. Good. Oof. Right in the junk. That's rough. Yeah, that's where I was aiming. Yep. Good work. And now back to run, hide, fight in a world with reasonable gun control measures in place. Everybody down on the ground. Dude, is that a bow and arrow? That's right. Now everyone get your phones out because... I have a, a whole thing. Ow! Who threw that? Okay. Well, as soon as I get this... Stop! I'm doing a murder. Stop it. You know what? I'm just going to write a sad poem in my room. That'll show you guys. 
Okay. Okay, that last one was funny. And we're back. And we're going to start with Zoe's dad, Thomas Jane, gutting a deer in his garage. Oh, I love this part because he hung the deer upside down. He did. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, I've never in my life seen someone bleed or gut a deer hanging from its antlers. Like you hang them from their feet. Yeah. Because you bleed them out of their neck. Yeah, of course. Well, he he wanted a shot for his Tinder profile of him standing next to an adorable <laughs> deer, standing up normal. It looks weird, too. It looks all skinny and weird because it's hanging. Wrong. Yeah, the deer is standing there, and it looks like he's measuring it at the tailors. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. It's really weird. It's really weird. I don't get it, but I am glad that Thomas Jane, that we haven't seen him again until now. That's yeah. been good for me. So the cops are all suiting up for their SWAT team thing. The bad guy is very excited that he's trending on Twitter. And because he's trending or because the news has picked it up, well, Zoe's dad finds out. So he heads under his bed to get his gun. Right. Oh, yeah. But before he does, we get a, a really clean scene of muscle, right? The kid who's clearly mentally ill. Oh, yeah. Chris. Having a psychotic episode. So I think this is the back to that classic right wing talking point. It's not the gun. It's the mental illness. We don't do enough for mental illness, although we're not going to fund anything to help people with mental illness. But they literally make him like private pile from Full Metal Jacket. Oh, they do all the tropes with wow, him. He, yeah. he has a, a psychotic break, right? Like a schizophrenic break, which, mm -hmm. by the way, very few Mass shooters actually have schizophrenia, hear voices, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then he's gay, right? He's queer coded because he goes in to kiss Tristan. Right. But Tristan must be too because he's like, not now, honey. Right. Well, he's fucking him and the sister, right? They're, uh... they're, they're polyamorous queer kids, you know? Oh, right. Because that's totally what mass shooters Just are Just like, like oh, a typical yeah. school shooter. Yep. I mean, look, if you know violence, you know that polyamorous queer couples are just the most violent people <laughs> you're ever going to meet. Look, if you want to make a movie about horrifying board game nights, then yes, a polyamorous queer couple <laughs> does need to be your villain. <laughs> Oh, so so to be clear, and maybe again, you guys can help me break this down. I thought they were trying to say, look how woke we are. We know what it means. Like, we know what poly people are like. But what they're really trying to say is like homosexuality is the root of evil. Yeah, school shooters yeah, 100%. are like. Uh, if we could just get a little more conversion therapy, it's a free speech issue. We'd be, we wouldn't have so many school shootings. That's basically what the movie's saying here. But they don't link it to the violence. They actually show them being really kind of sweet to each other for a moment. And then all of a sudden they just go back to being violent. Well, and that's the thing, right? It's like, look at gayness, right? Let's, let's depict sweet gayness and then correlate it with violence, right? It's like the myth about the Columbine shooters holding hands in the hallways, mm. right? Yeah, so they really do go back to Columbine, and it's weird because they go back to the myth and the reality of Columbine, like, like indiscriminately. Yep. Ugh. Absolutely. Okay, got it. So yeah, Chris is done hitting his, you know, stereotype bingo card. <laughs> so now dad goes under his bed to get his gun because the only poisonous message that they hadn't sent yet was your kid is dead and it's your fault personally. So, right, uh, track, right. yeah, dad's going to take these shooters out himself. And Zoe's just wandering around doing stupid shit still. Mm -hmm. This I remember. I don't remember what I'm, I'm referencing here, but I wrote the lead is very stupid and she should definitely be dead by now. <laughs> yes. So this is where <laughs> she's going to confront bitch tits, which will be yes. the bullying lie of the movie. So. In order to get, I, just, I don't like how you're calling. You call me that all the time. You call me that in our chats. You change the <laughs> chats, so that's my name. Go ahead. Oh right, so uh, it's like loving, and now loving. he's yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a it's a special name that I have for the people I care about, <laughs> and I care that? about this character in the and movie. You care about this terrorist? Cool. <laughs> I do. I care about this terrorist. But they're playing hide and shoot. Right. He's got a shotgun and he's shooting her. At one point, she literally hides behind a locker door, and it works. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was like that would not do anything. She might as well throw her shadow in his eyes, just like oh, yeah. it's like she's holding up a piece of foil. And to knock him out, to show you how silly this is, she sprays him with a fire extinguisher. I, I wrote in my notes because a cream pie was taken. <laughs> she, she explodes a bag of hydrogen and bounces the bullet back in his face. Yeah. <laughs> 
so now she's tied up school shooter, right? In, oh, no, in she's the, handcuffed him using the cop's handcuffed handcuff. him. Right. Yeah. In the theater. They're going to have a chat in a second. But first, she has to have a pep talk with mom. Now, I teased you before. I was going to explain why mom is in so many different outfits for this movie. This is where we get that explanation. So I wrote this mom device is completely unnecessary. But you're about to tell me why it's necessary. <laughs> yeah. Here's why. Okay. Every time Zoe kills a mass shooter, she lets go of her mom's death. And the more she lets go of her mom, the more alive mom gets to be in the afterlife. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So they're okay. So I work as a psychotherapist and I help people process grief. Mm -hmm. Are they telling me that what I should be prescribing to my patients is to go out and murder people? Yep. They need to murder people because each each time she kills, and this is where mom explains it. She's like, you're holding me back, honey. And she's like, I'm not holding you back. And she's like, I am. Every time you let go, I get stronger and better. Oh, it's true because she starts, her hair comes back. Her hair comes back. Oh my God. Because she killed the goth girl. What? Yep. That's why she she took off her cancer hat here is because mm-hmm. yeah. each death makes her her cancer a little bit smaller. Makes her post afterlife cancer her a little heaven bit cancer better. Yep. Shrinks. Baffling. What? Killing kids is heaven chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. So basically, at the beginning of the film when Thomas Jane is like, "Honey, I think we need to go back to therapy." She's like, "No worries, dad. No therapy needed. I'm just going to go and vigilante kill a bunch of school shooters and I'll be better then." Yes, and this movie's like, "And she was." Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. But again, to this movie's credit cuz it can't help but make fun of itself, she's in the middle of this completely insane conversation with her dead mom and bitch hits, right? Wakes up and he's like, "Oh, so stupid. I hate this movie." <laughs> He's like, what? So you hear voices too? (laughs) And she's like, no, my voices are a dramatic device. Your co-conspirator's voices are an ugly portrait of mental illness. Which is also a device. Which is also a device. (laughs) (laughs) And this is where it's time for this kid to try to earn his Oscar because he's a mass shooter because he was bullied. And fun fact. Mass shooters aren't bullied. In fact, overwhelmingly, they are bullies. Yeah. And they're Ben Shapiro fans. Well, this is why I like Tristan, because Tristan is like a quintessential mass shooter. (laughs) And according to Ben Shapiro's fans, bullying is free speech. So they don't know what side of the (laughs) argument they're on here. Right. And also, this kid describes, and don't get me wrong, it's a traumatic experience, so I don't want to belittle it. Like, he's talking about getting pantsed by kids on the playground in sixth grade, and, like, it's really sad, right? And I think that in the therapeutic space, talking about these early childhood experiences of embarrassment and shame and trauma is really important for, for growth and healing. But the idea that he got pants and that's why now he wants to murder everybody at the school is so disgusting. Like it's so just inhuman that they, they thought that that would be a realistic or legitimate plot point. If embarrassment during middle school caused mass shootings, I would have killed so many. Exactly. Goddamn people. And to be very clear, statistically, it does not. The instances yeah. where kids are bullied and then mass shoot is Close to zero. Now, there are instances where kids are bullied constantly and they come in and kill their abusers. That's not a mass shooting. But more often, they're bullied and then they kill themselves. Right. What happens more often is they kill themselves. And the reason why this trope is in this movie is, one, we don't want to talk about mental illness and depression in society, and Ben Mm -hmm. Shapiro sure doesn't, but because it reinforces the trope of losers are dangerous. Right. Right. It reinforces the trope of the people who are bullied deserve it because this character who then murders people randomly because he was bullied is a bad character. It's robbing us of our empathy for the victims of bullying who, again, do not enact violence on their abusers the vast, vast majority of the time. Right. This is the fantasy of an abuser justifying their abuse. Absolutely. I mean, it goes down to these larger society ills of the people who are the weakest among us and the people who are the most kind of disenfranchised 
want it to be that way. It's because they are weak in their constitution. And don't worry about the fact that they're disenfranchised because they're criminals anyway. Right. It's disgusting. But those those of us who are in power, those of us like white men who have, you know, hold a moral position in society because we contribute to, you know, our capitalist values, because we contribute to making sure that we're giving jobs to people, making sure that we're kind of running the show. It's okay if we abuse that power a little bit because we're actually just taking it out on people who deserve it anyway. Right, exactly. Exactly. It's setting up victims to be deserving. Because again, this movie is written by society's bullies for society's bullies. But that's okay. Zoe's going to change him into a good guy by pointing out that, hey, a girl who didn't bully you died. And he's going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm a good guy now. So he's redeemed. I I don't know. Meanwhile, we're watching the bad guy monologue some more on Facebook. He's telling us that it's not video games fault. I wrote my notes. Gamers rise up. Thank you, Ben Shapiro. Yeah. It's not because I like Fortnite. It's about ethics in gaming journalism (laughs) is why I'm doing this. Yeah. I hate this movie. Oh, it's so bad. It's also really long. At this point, I paused it and I was like, oh, my God, we're only halfway through. Yep. Yeah. Oh God, is this the half? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. I think that's why I wrote this movie oh. is very long. Oh. Yeah. But this is where Tristan gets the cops on the phone and they they banter in stereotypes. And I don't know, Heath and Kara, maybe you can tell me how masterful this performance was, but I it was so boring. <laughs> he goes, I'm an agent of chaos. Shit, that's an exact Batman quote. I'm an agent of change. <laughs> I do love that I wrote right here. This Tristan kid is not a terrible actor. I legit buy him (laughs) as a charismatic narcissistic sociopath. He's clearly not bullied. He's the bully. It's too bad he has a terrible agent and will never work again. (laughs) Okay, but he can be on our podcast. (laughs) Does he call himself a midwife of truth here Mm -hmm. also? (laughs) He didn't write the script. (laughs) <laughs> we can't blame right. no, he's a good actor delivering that ridiculous fucking line and he pulls it off and i still buy it i still buy it because he's that good eli <laughs> <laughs> oh hashtag tristan gate this is like the ultimate test this is how you should have to get into like rada is by acting a ben shapiro script successfully <laughs> so by by the way you guys so i'm watching this and i have I'm my partner's in town and he lives in scotland and we're watching this together and he's really confused because not only is hunting culture completely different in scotland people People don't have handguns really in Scotland. Schools confuse him. He goes, he literally said, why does the school logo, like it was on this, the wall of the cafeteria. He goes, why does that school logo look like a sports team logo? And I was like, that's what school <laughs> logos look like. And he was like, what? And I Googled all my old school logos and he was so confused because in Scotland, all the school logos are like crests. Yeah. So he was like, he was like, why does this look like the NBA? But anyway, <laughs> the main thing that he asked is, why it, are news stations actually live, like showing this live stream? That would never happen home. And I was like, no, I think it might happen here. Oh, are you kidding? Yeah. Here, there'd be a congressional hearing on the right of Periscope to show the shooting. Exactly. The, is it allowed? Can YouTube monetize the particular kills? Are they allowed <laughs> to do super chats? It wasn't happening in Australia, but pretty much the rest of the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was literally asking. He was like, I don't get it. Like, that would never fly. That would never be legal for mainstream news outlets to, like, show a live stream of an active situation. And I was like, have you ever seen the news here in L.A.? Like, the entire news is funded by car chases. Yep. Like, it's the only thing people watch on the news <laughs> in L.A. We love car chases. Absolutely. And anything horrible could happen at any moment. I think the only thing they rely on is, like, an eight-second delay. Mm-hmm. But they're on all the time here. And, like... You know, I do see that there would be some sort of a periscope thing, like you said. But honestly, I think Twitter, maybe not Twitter. At this point, Facebook would probably shut it down. Don't you think? The live stream? Oh, uh, well, that Mm. certainly hasn't been the case the last couple of mass shootings. Although, you know, they shut down one particular stream. And then, of course, it gets copied by Nazis who then show it again. They'd shut it down five years afterwards like they did with Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly. Just about right. right in time. Right in time. And by the way, keep in mind, 
they can shut them down. They choose not to, right? You can digitally code stuff so that it shuts it down. It's why, for instance, you can't put a Disney song on Facebook, no matter how many streams. Right. They're very good at shutting those down. (laughs) Mass shootings, not so much. Yeah. So, yeah, Thomas Jane sneaks around a little bit. He gets his gun. He's trying to snipe the kids, but they're blocked by the Trump wall that they built against the windows. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. But this is where Tristan finds out about Zoe. And they they really do the diehard thing. He does the like, get down here or else I'm going to kill a kid every five minutes. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And (laughs) he says, all right. I'm going to kill somebody every five minutes if you don't come down to the cafeteria. And then he shoots somebody immediately. Mm -hmm. And Zoe's like, oh, well, you're going to start at zero, I guess. That's just just a weird system. I figured it would be like I would get it either. All right. All right. I'm just going to give a speech to this to this kid in the theater. And then I'll catch you at like four and a half minutes, probably. Yeah, oh, you're right. She just like dawdles. <laughs> she does. She, we watch her limp down the hallway and we're like, oh, she's going to turn herself in. But instead, she stops the theater unlocks the the kid, right? The bullied kid gives him a, you fucking suck and you're fat pep talk. I'm not making that up, by the way. No. She's like, you're fat. She calls that's him fat. Yeah, she does. It's supposed to be a big speech to turn him into a good guy. And she's like, you're a fat kid. Yeah. Is that helpful? And then she hands him a gun. <laughs> she rearms him. Yes. She, yeah, she gives him a gun. If he shoots her there, credits, I would have <laughs> loved this movie. <laughs> no, it makes no sense what the fuck is wrong with her and also this is the point in the movie where she's full on ash with the boomstick because what we never we never (laughs) mentioned before is that she got shot in the leg at some point and she like tourniqueted her leg with a belt so that's why she's like hobbling around but she looks like a total badass she has like a ray from star wars like a yeah um, what's her name tank Um, girl Tank Girl or uh, John Voight's daughter. Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Angelina Jolie. What movie is she in where she looks like a total badass like this? All of them. All of them, exactly. No, it's like a video game. Except for the it's Taurus. a video game movie. Lara Croft, Tomb Raider. Yes, Baby. she's Lara Croft. There were two of those movies. They're great. Yeah. Gone in 60 Seconds, Stealing Ferraris. Anyways, she does <laughs> Mr. Eventually... and Mrs. Smith. You meant Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's that amazing movie with her. She turns <laughs> herself into the cafeteria and she has some banter with the villain. <laughs> The, the best part is right at the beginning. She walks in. And he's like, what up, green jacket girl? Green jacket she wears. And he's <laughs> like, damn it. That's what I was calling. <laughs> she looks like Woody Allen, right? <laughs> like, huh? like Annie Hall. Remember Woody? You guys are too young. Whatever. Way too young. I'm a 55-year-old high school student. <laughs> oh, by the way, yes. Why is everybody 30? All the lead roles are in their mid-30s. Easily. Oh, absolutely. The background <laughs> yeah. actors are all actual underage kids though so it's really clear that the lead actors are super old Mm. so she asks him why he's doing this and again he can't say because I was radicalized by right wing media so he says I like being definitive (laughs) I don't remember any of this dialogue you're so good why would you why would you (laughs) it's Ben Shapiro trying to get out of the ticket of his legacy while a cop anally searches him he's like no maybe they just like being definitive (laughs) so but just as he's about to shoot her because she's the good guy and she's been stopping his plans wouldn't you know it but bullied kid shows up to save the day and then immediately gets killed by mentally ill guy well does he save the day no he does nothing he has no plan here it makes no sense he walks in he's got a gun so that's I guess good step one but he just walks into the cafeteria where Two bad guys, at least maybe three, also have guns. And he's like, put your guns down. And they're all like, no, we also have guns. No, you do that too. And also we have a bomb. (laughs) (laughs) And then he's just like, yeah, okay, right. No, I didn't think this through. uh, We're at an impasse. Yeah, what actually happened here? I completely forgot. And I I watched this movie, by the way, about 16 hours ago. (laughs) (laughs) What happens is new good guy just fires a shotgun into a crowd of kids and runs away yep. <laughs> and then gets shot instantly. And Zoe's like, oh, well, you got to crack some eggs. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> like she gave him that gun back and then he probably killed somebody on accident. Yeah. Or on purpose. We don't even know. Yeah. Facts don't care about your feelings. Bye. <laughs> like what the fuck is happening? He gets killed, but that gives Zoe time to run away. 
Wait, did we leave something out? Did did somehow love interest get hurt at some point? Yeah, he got shot during that hail of shotgun fire yeah. from the hero, new hero character. Yeah. I was really confused because they're running down the hall and then he like collapses and it's like they've only gone 10 feet and he literally looks like he's out of breath and that's why he collapsed. Yes. I wrote in my notes. Oh, okay. He got shot. I thought he just got winded like me and Heath trying to jog with Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like. None of us know he was shot. There's no visible blood. He just looks like he's like, Oh God. Oh God. I haven't done cardio in a while. And she's like, what are you doing? We have to get out of here. <laughs> So now it's time to kill mentally ill stereotype guy. And he's... wait, wait, wait! Before we kill him, there's actually a love scene. Oh, there is. Is there? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> this is such good acting. Why don't you describe the excellent acting that happens here? <laughs> Again, you have no heart. There's only so much you can do with a bad script. <laughs> You're dead inside. There's only so much you can do. Have you guys seen The Undoing? <laughs> no. I had to give it up. Nicole Kidman, I know, is a good actress. She's amazing. But there's only so much you can do when your whole script is. Oh, and anybody who's seen that show knows what i'm talking about yeah so she she brings him into a classroom and lays him down on a couch and nary to be spoken of again in the film (laughs) yep oh that's right he's just done he's He's just laying there dying of a a bullet wound on the couch for the rest of the movie and we never address it and that she kisses him first says goodbye and Yes, we do see him later, but she never asks after him. No. Nope. She is never concerned about There is one scene later where she's talking to a cop, by the way, spoiler, and she's like, can you do me a favor? And I thought that's when she was going to say, go to this room in the school and make sure that my best friend is okay. But no, nope, that doesn't happen. No. No. Instead, she gives him a smooch and she's like, he's like, I have to tell you something. And she gives him a smooch and she says, tell me at prom. And he's like, oh, okay. Cool. No, I was going to tell you that about the bomb. You should. There's this a bomb. is like a really you big. A bomb. You need to focus up. There's Which bombs is what happens. Terrorism. She, she's like, she's like, tell me at prom. It's going to be a magical night. And he's like, love that. Love that for us. So excited to get all up in there. I love how your body looks. Mmm, yummers. But uh, there's a bomb. There's a bomb in the cafeteria. And I'm shot. So it just please don't forget about me entirely. And then when you see the cops later, don't say anything about me. Don't let that happen. <laughs> Do you like my Christian Bale Batman voice? Ethan Kara, I think it's really good acting. Do you guys think I'm an amazing actor? Now it's just occurred to me that maybe Kara and Heath think I'm an incredible actor. <laughs> we'll get to it later. Anyways, now it's time to kill problematically mentally ill guy. Oh, in the worst scene, po- this is probably the worst scene in the whole movie. This no? is so good, though. Because <laughs> There's, it's pretty funny. Because they, they check off science lab, but they don't know how to make it happen. Right. Yeah. So remember yeah, yeah. at the beginning of the movie, they were like explosions, hydrogen. She runs to the science lab. We're like, she's great. She's going to blow up. Crazy guy. So smart. Nope. She turns on the hydrogen and it makes a foof near crazy guy. And then she's like, oh, but before <laughs> yeah. that, before that, she <laughs> runs into the room and turns all the gas burners on. Mm-hmm. And then That's she goes the and then she goes and hides behind a lab bench. And I'm like, girl, you go and get hurt, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is not, this is not a focused thing. This is just a, this is a kamikaze situation that you've just created. (laughs) Yeah. But whatever. You've you've created your own bomb. So congratulations, Zoe. Yes. But yeah, she and crazy guy struggle. He crazy guy monologue. Oh yeah. She starts to fight him. To be clear, she's my size. Mm -hmm. She's like five foot three and he's like six, seven. He's like lurch. Yeah. In real life. And so they have to use this really terrible stunt double because he literally throws her across the room. Mm -hmm. And it's like in an SNL sketch where it's like a rag doll. Yeah, Heath in a wig falling (laughs) through from one side. And just as he's about to take her out during his crazy monologue, Thomas Jane snipes him in the head. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have a question, and I feel like this is the panel to ask. Do they let you keep your sniper rifle when you leave the army? (laughs) Do they let you keep any other military weapons like hand grenades or bazookas? Well, I'm pretty sure that this movie takes place in Texas or somewhere like it. That's true. So I think you can just buy a sniper from like 7-Eleven. Yeah, he probably picked that up at a Walmart on his way (laughs) there. Or like he opened a new checking account at his bank and they gave it to him. Also, that room's full of hydrogen gas now. If the whole room exploded when he shot through the window and he was just like, ah, did not see that coming. I don't 
think the room's full of hydrogen gas. She she exploded the little hydrogen thing. That yeah, she little made. hydrogen. Little. I exploded. thought she turned on all the taps, but used one of them to make her little one. Yeah, the movie forgot. The taps aren't full of hydrogen. In my head, the, I, don't ruin this for me. In my head, every school has a very large hydrogen tank. Mm -hmm. The taps are probably full of natural gas. It's just so that you can light your your Bunsen burner. I think it's I think it's explosive. They I think no, they it have is very large amounts of explosive gas that they can just fill a room with. Very, it quickly. is explosive. It's as if you turned on your oven but didn't light the burner. Like that can cause a horrible explosive fire. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure one bullet at that point anywhere near that explodes the whole building. That's... Maybe, maybe you're right, but it, but just to be clear, it's not hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not like it's not a bomb. It's a fire. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mihahu, dad somehow <laughs> gets the kill shot from the ground. Yep. Dad gets the kill shot. Third floor building. I don't know. Dad, to be clear, has decided to become a vigilante sniper, but not tell the cops about it and just do it on his own. Right. And we watch him being arrested. That's what happens. Yeah. He's like, look, I'm helping. She notices that it's dad and gives him like a really kind of like sup look. And then he goes, she gives, sup. <laughs> she gives him the head nod like, Bing. Good job killing that person Wink. who you had absolutely no way of knowing was one of the school shooters, Dad. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> really wanted Dad to accidentally shoot the boyfriend as they were going down the hallway. Oh, sorry. That's on me, honey kitten. That's on Daddy. Or to accidentally shoot honey kitten. Like, there are multiple <laughs> scenes where the dad is training his scope, like, on her head. Yeah. What? It's ridiculous. I could be single again. Can you imagine being a father and looking through the scope of your sniper rifle at your own daughter? Wouldn't you be like, I think maybe I should put this gun away. Yep. You Something's know wrong. Something's happening in my life to bring me to this point. I feel like I've taken a wrong turn somewhere. This <laughs> yeah. is maybe I've gone too far. <sighs> but he, he snipes the guy. And then we watch super polite FBI and cops like nicely arrest him. <laughs> They're just like, sir, sir, uh, you're not allowed technically to be a vigilante sniper. Please come with us nicely. Come with us. We get Yes, we can stop at Burger King on the way. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to save everyone a ton of time for these next two scenes. One, because they're terribly shot and two, because they don't matter at all. Uh -huh. Here's what happens. Tristan grabs a random kid from the crowd and walks off with one of the bomb buckets. The movie will not explain this, but what Tristan then does is kills that kid and then blows up the bomb bucket to fake his own death. Right, which at this point, I thought that dead body was her friend who was on the couch. So I was <laughs> I very that too, until I, I watched the movie a second time and I was like, oh, okay, it's a stupid red herring. It's not this. Yeah, yeah. So he does that. She, the van, which is filled with bombs, which her friend told her about, that she backs out of the window that it went through because, you know, when you crash through a wall, you can just back reverse and it totally goes backwards. It goes back and explodes harmlessly in the parking lot. Luckily, no one's in the parking lot, even though we just saw a bunch of people run no, past the car. There, there are people in the parking lot. She throws the van in reverse with a bomb inside towards the cops and survivors who are right outside. They even right. show us. Yep. At this point, they've cleared the cafeteria. Yeah. There's no one left in the cafeteria and the bomb has a 44 minute countdown on it. Oh no, it's 44 seconds. I thought it was 44 uh, seconds. It is 44 oh, seconds. <laughs> Though 44 <laughs> minutes is the movie we should remake. If they, uh, if we just got to watch that, 44 minutes after. To be clear, <laughs> there's no leading zeros. No, there are not. <laughs> so it looks like 44 minutes and some seconds when and now I'm learning it's 44 seconds and some 44 minutes is so much better, though. Like they're all standing outside while the van just sits there. Like, does anyone want to watch an episode and a half of Everybody Loves Raymond? <laughs> <laughs> but why didn't she just run outside with everybody else and say, get down, the van's going to explode instead of reversing it into the crowd because of the kids that wouldn't leave see we get it we get this incredibly terrible shot where it shows the van and then there's like two kids who are like 
I don't know. Maybe I'll stay around the cafeteria. And that's why she pushes the van out the door. Oh, no, because I yeah, thought she injured. emptied the cafeteria. No, there's two this. injured girls yeah, in injured. the corner with people helping them. And she starts to do the trolley. Um, ex- uh, what's it called? <laughs> the trolley problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the trolley in her head. Problem. And she's like, yeah, yeah, save two and murder everybody. <laughs> murder everyone outside. <laughs> I'm sure they're fine. Oh my God. So yeah, the bomb goes off. Where's Ben Shapiro? I can solve this. She, she gets arrested, which is just a weird moment because then we cut back to like her in the back of a police van and head cop shows up and uncuffs her and he's like, oh, sorry about arresting you. We just saw a young person with a gun during a mass shooting. Yeah, she's running yeah. around with an automatic weapon, by the way. And at this point, before she gets arrested, her hair is still down. And if anybody listening to the show is a woman like me or a dude with long hair or any other, you know, gender who has long hair, you know what I'm talking about when I say it would be in a ponytail by now. <laughs> why, wait, why, why would it be in a ponytail by now? So when your hair is longer than your eyes... It gets in your fucking eyes when you're running around trying to do shit. Okay. This is why that we need sense. Noah on this episode. He takes the week off. He could. Tell it's us. irritating. It's like it's the reason why when you watch sports, like the tennis players, the basketball players, the volleyball players, the cheerleaders, all the different athletes who have long hair, or the the football play. You know whether they're male, whether they're female, whether they're trans, whether they're non-binary. Everybody who has long hair has it up. Okay, it's true. Because you can't, it's the most irritating thing in the world to have like sweaty, like stringy hair running around in your eye. And she's running around armed, trying to kill bad guys. And it really, honestly, like I feel very strongly about this, you guys. It pisses me off. This is the hole in the story. This is the problem with (laughs) the plot. This is the main plot hole. That's an excellent action point that we need to touch. Because if she had just had barrettes in this whole movie and they kept (laughs) falling out and she was like, wait, 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 I lost it on the ground. Does anyone have a bobby pin? Okay, everyone has a bobby pin. Okay. (laughs) She's just doing that thing where you don't know what wrist it's on. She's just reaching behind her head. (laughs) I know I have one in here somewhere. Let me go check goth girl's purse. (laughs) You know goth girl's got plenty of hair ties. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, she's in the back of the van post-rescuing everybody. (laughs) The cop's like, good job. Uh, stopping that mass shooting. Yeah. Unfortunately, our hands were tied by the liberal media. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Turns out Black Lives Matter, so we had to stay outside the whole time. <laughs> but uh, good work in there doing our job. Oh, and I think Dead Mom came back at some point. Yeah, Dead Mom is totally great. She's like, yep, you've killed three people. I'm I'm ready to go off to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> she talks to Dad real quick. She's like, Dad, are, are you going to go to jail for sniping a child in the head? And he's like, eh. Hey. Don't worry about it. Hand wavy movie stuff. Hand wavy movie stuff. (laughs) And then she sees Tristan walking away from the crowd. (gasps) He's going to get away with it. And he's got a MAGA hat on. Yep. He's got a red hat on. <laughs> yeah, he, he took, he took, so he took the charred body decoy boys hat, mm-hmm. put it on his head, starts to sneak into the, into the woods. And Zoe thinks, hmm, instead of pointing this out to the 100 person SWAT team, (laughs) I'm going to find an automatic weapon in the grass Mm -hmm. and then follow him into the woods myself. Even dumber, it's dad's sniper rifle, which they left there. They were like, we'll we'll get to that later. We'll leave that in case (laughs) Zoe needs to kill anyone else. (laughs) Oh, I see. So they're like, we're going to arrest you, but we're going to leave this fully loaded automatic weapon right here for anybody to find. Works for me. So we watch Tristan get out his go bag, because you know how mass shooters have a go bag full of hundred dollar (laughs) bills and (laughs) fake passports. Oh, I thought he was just geocaching and found a really good one. (laughs) (laughs) oh my god I love it No, but he's going through his money and she shoots him and then remember the monologue from the very beginning god such good movie making she's like your lungs are gonna fill with blood I won't let you suffer and then she goes and this is so fucking stupid I love it so much she goes (laughs) this is the best or will I (laughs) and then he leaves Next to oh, right. psych or she does not. A, she she literally picks up a boulder and does a knot and like <laughs> fake smashes his face with the boulder and is like, or will I? 
leaving. I, yes, I will leave you to suffer. That's it. That's what's happening here. So to be clear, once again, this is the good girl, quote unquote, Mm -hmm. the good guy in the movie who's fully armed, who out of spite and vindictiveness, out of revenge, follows the school shooter into the woods when there are law enforcement officials who could go and arrest him. (laughs) Yep. Because he's not even any, he's not even armed at this point. Instead, she goes, murders him in cold blood and then lets him slowly die a painful death because that's healthy. Yep. She shoots him with a sniper rifle like a deer, gives the same speech to tie up that amazing loose end that they started and walks away. She she goes to jail now, yeah, she's not but they a, don't show any of that. A murderer. She yep. murdered this person in cold blood. She was not, it was not in self-defense. There was no, she is a murderer. And mm-hmm. somehow the, the moral, the takeaway of this movie is that she's the good guy. Yeah. It's like they watched Dirty Harry and they were like, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and that's the movie. Yep. That's the end of the movie. And then we get a, a musical outro which is like just a nice country song about watching a kid die slowly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's so weird. It's okay to murder people. This movie is so dark, you guys. It's this is like honestly, I like to joke that you guys made me watch terrible movies, but this is a different kind of terrible. We like to keep you on your toes. <laughs> and, and now we know you have Stockholm syndrome for the acting, so I need to go deeper with the terrible acting. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these things where like I was very on the fence and have been throughout this whole thing. And I feel it from you guys too, of being like funny, not funny, funny. No, not funny. Dark. Yep. Not okay. They were accidentally funny a bunch though. A bunch. They were, yeah. But I still have like, feel like I need to take a shower now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're like t- needing to take a shower. Accidentally funny. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a good way to describe Ben Shapiro's filmmaking. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, what's the tagline? Ooh, I'm going to go with run, hide, fight. Ben Shapiro. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Um, murder in cold blood is only acceptable if you're doing it for revenge, apparently. No, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> then it's great. good and it's a heroin character. Yeah, yeah. Then you're the good and guy. It's awesome. Yeah. And country music, the end. Yep. All right. Well, while that does it for our review of Run, Hide, Fight, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still have a mullet-tacular to announce. Eli, what's on deck? Well, Heath, after this week, I think it's time to kick back and have some fun with the Christian action film starring Dog the Bounty Hunter, (laughs) Hunter's Creed. Fantastic. (laughs) All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 288 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Kara, as always, for joining us. And in case anybody's new, where can they go for some, uh, some of your power nerd content that you have? Apparently, you just got to hit up iloveskinbooks.com because it's, um, it's <laughs> still live. I just checked. <laughs> I refresh it every I will refresh it for uh, the rest of our lives. And of course, big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms as well. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of Pietro Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Eli Bosnick and Kara Santa Maria, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Breakfast clothes. Our heroine, Zoe, lived the rest of her life with the horrific trauma of witnessing her fellow classmates get murdered, and then choosing to murder the shooter herself, even though she didn't have to. But hey, at least she got to fight in a war like her daddy always wanted. (laughs) Ben Shapiro's wife went on to tell him that a wet vagina is a disease. The listener, who used to email us every time we mentioned guns on any of our shows, literally shot himself in the foot last year and hasn't emailed us since. (laughs) Are you serious? 100% (laughs) true. He forgot he had messaged me on Facebook. Oh my god.
The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.